would like to call to order the town board. Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Flamini? Here. Trustee Dettin? Here. Trustee Hill? Here. Trustee Taylor? Here. Chairman Deal? Here. Are there any agenda changes? Hearing none, is there approval of the minutes of the regular meeting held October 21st, 2014 at 6 30 p.m.? I move for approval. Second. Second. Any discussion? Please call the roll. Trustee Fellini? Aye. Trustee Dutine? Aye. Trustee Hill? Aye. Trustee Taylor? Aye. Chairman Neal? Pass. Um, item five, any citizens' comments? Matthew Gunner, he can't talk. So anybody else? Okay, okay. good. Hearing none, uh, is there, uh, next item on the agenda is authorized bills for payment. Uh, Trustee Taylor. Uh, move to pay authorized bills. Second. Any discussion? Okay. Please call the roll. Trustee Flamini? Aye. Trustee Dutine? Aye. Trustee Hill? Aye. Trustee Taylor? Aye. Chairman Neal? Aye. Next item on the agenda is to um, receive and place on file the Zion Township an uh, Annual Financial Report for the year ending April 30th, 2014. Uh, also known as the audit, and I called Kevin Kennedy today, um, and in your stack of paperwork there is the management letter, find it in my stack. Um, we, uh, but difficulties encountered, we encountered no significant difficulties in dealing with management and performing um, and completing our audit. Um, Uh, professional standards require us to accumulate all no and likely misstatements identified during the audit other than those that were clearly trivial and communicate them to the appropriate level of management. Management has made any corrections if they were needed. In addition, none of the misstatements detected as a result of our procedures and corrected by management were material either individually or in aggregate to each opinion units. Financial statements taken as a whole. So as you can see, this is um, Kind of a standard letter. We and I, I had called Kevin and asked him if he was available to come to the meeting tonight, and he was not available to come. And I asked if we could get, aside from the standard letter, something you know that says that how you know how good the audit was. And he laughed and said, "Oh yeah, we don't provide those letters. We just we just don't say anything." I was like, "Well, is that kind of stings." You know, <laughs> I'm like, "You would think that like you know auditors would say things are really smooth and." Because we made a lot of changes this last year with, we had a full-time accountant, we moved to, um, to uh, eliminating that position and working with uh, an accounting firm, uh, Nathan Gaskill has just bent over backwards helping us um, this last year uh, with all the cuts that we've had, all the changes, I mean it's been really significant. So I really want this letter from Kevin giving us a good start, but uh, I said that they don't do that. So we do have the standard letter, it's in your packet. Um, let me see if there was anything, um, and he said there's absolutely nothing to share, that everything went perfect and, and uh, the numbers are, you know, are the numbers. So are there any, uh, any questions or anything anybody has about the audit? Is there a motion to approve? I'm going to move uh, accepting the audit place in the file. Is there a second? Second. Um, uh, is there any further discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Flamini? Aye. Trustee Dutine? Aye. Trustee Hill? Aye. Aye. Trustee Taylor? Aye. Chairman Neal? Aye. Okay, the next item on the agenda is to consider truth and taxation law resolution for Chairman Neal, which is, that's the same, the same, uh, statement as the audit. I mean, as the levy proclamation thing. Correct. It's just stating what the truth and taxation law and resolution. So I look at correct. Yeah. It's just a fancy name for it. Uh, so uh, tonight we're proposing, and because of the caps that are on township government, we actually have a cap that's uh, what? Let me just actually get the specific numbers. Um, we are capped under the town fund at 0.25. Uh, percent and under the general assistance 0.10 uh, that being said so the total rate we can go for is 0.35 all the other taxing bodies the limit that they have is 0.66 
So understand the difference between township government and all the other governments uh, is that we have our own regulated um, tax cap through townships that other governing bodies don't have. So given that, uh, Sherry, I, yeah. I'm not sure I understand what you mean when you say other governmental bodies are capped at Well, the PTEL limiting rate is 0.667, and that's what everybody's capped at, um, correct, David? Well, we have, we have different fund, general fund, fire fund, all that stuff, lot tort liability insurance, they each have their own caps right. on them. So we have general assistance, right. general township, each of those funds have their, their own caps on them. So each other governmental body has its own fund caps, um, okay. except when you're talking about IMRF, I mean, Social Security, right, they don't um, have things like that. Right, and and bond, their bond funds also are not. Correct, okay. correct. But you do have a PTEL property tax extension limitation cap that they can only go up by um, its CPI, consumer price index, which was one and a half percent, I think, this year, um, or five percent, whichever is less. Right. 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 So that's based on your highest extension over the past three years. Right. Taking the company all. They make it really yeah. complicated really so that really nobody can really understand yeah. what it is. <laughs> um, and so all that said, uh, and just to share with everybody, um, I gave you guys two, I have way too many papers here, two sheets. One explains the levy uh, and the, the, the best case scenario we think we're going to have this year is um, $567,375. It's the one with the yellow highlighted. Um, this is actually, these are the numbers that we got for the town fund. And then general assistance is $226,950. If you look at the, at the sheet below that, um, it says general assistance fund analysis, which is the sheet that was right behind the one in the yellow. Okay, so it's this one. Okay. Oh, right to your right. Like, I got it. There you go. Okay. Um, so this actually gives a total breakdown. So um, the general town fund analysis, if you look to the far right, um, our total income, if our levy is at 567,375, including, uh, let me just make sure I'm saying this right. Including. Where are you looking, Sherry? Okay, so if you look on the top, all right, of which page? Um, the yellow page? No, nope, this page. Go we're only okay. going on this page because that, that just gave us the information. So if, if the number we're using is 567,000, all right, uh -huh. if you add to that 40,000 in um, replacement tax, 10,000 from GA rent, and then 5,400 for miscellaneous, it's all in the right hand side in the notes of that form. Our total revenue will be six hundred sixty-five thousand seven hundred or six hundred seventy-seven dollars. Okay. If you add that, so that will be for this year. If you add that to our beginning balance that is budgeted for um, the two hundred seventy-two thousand two hundred fifty dollars, our our total revenue would be the nine hundred thirty-seven. Is everybody following that line item? Mm -hmm. Our total expenses, all right, that we had that we scrunched down to last year and worked really hard and eliminated positions and eliminated programs uh, and cut back in a hundred different ways. Um, our budget is now at seven hundred and forty seven thousand ninety one dollars. Right. That said, if you go down to the to the to the diagram below it, if we brought our expenses down to seventy uh, to seven hundred wait a minute to 700,000 from 747,000. So let me go back up to the top. If we, if we spend exactly the same amount of money and bring in exactly the same amount of money next year, by the end of um, the next fiscal year, 2017, we will be $78,000 in the red. And that's if everything stays the same next year. So. You're, we're thinking this is still going to probably go down another 2%. Larry, is that what you were thinking? Well, generally, you lose 2% uh, at the Board of Review, but again, this doesn't take into consideration any uh, new construction or anything that we're going to probably get next year. Uh, there are some positives that are going to happen in 2015. That would be huge. So, so there's a chance we could stay the same. 
When will the yeah. hospital come online? Uh, the hospital when it's finished. <laughs> Good question. I mean, they're telling me 2015, but who knows what, how things are going. But there are other buildings that are going to be put on for next year. Uh, the building that's on Sheridan Road will be 100% for next year. Right, I'm just, I mean... With a, they're, they're projecting 2015. They'll be done. <coughs> and what's the, isn't there a process that they have to be in the building before, and use it before it can be taxed? Yes, or, yeah. What is, what is that? What's they that? cannot be put on until they are occupied. But it still could be a, a percentage of the year. If they're, if they go in in June, I can still put them on for 50% for that year. And is there... Is the definition of occupied getting an occupancy permit from the city? Yes, and I have spoken to the city about this, that uh, as soon as we see somebody wandering around in the chair in the building, I want that thing to be occupied. <laughs> I mean, uh, when it's finished, it's finished, you know. Um, let's make sure I get an occupancy on it. And as I was going to say in my report, uh, we did uh, sign an agreement with the hospital, and we, they dropped their 2011 P tab, so we're kind of locked in until 2019. And that was some of the wording in the agreement that uh, things will not go on until their uh, occupancy is uh, issued. What square, what was it for square footage? Um, $180 a square foot. So what does that come out to on, on your best guess? Well, I can't remember how, how big of an addition is it. Do you remember, Dave? 400,000 square foot addition? No, I don't think it was that I, I, you know, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but it's a, it's a large edition. Oh, there's a couple hundred thousand. It's a couple hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. So just, if you take, say it's $200,000 or 200,000 square feet times 180 divided by three, that's what the assessed valuation will be. And take your percentage out of that. It's going to take me a while to do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's 12, 12 million out of the EAB. Yeah. What's that? It's 12 million add on the EAB. On the EAV? Yeah. Oh, if I'm doing that right. <laughs> 200,000 times 180. Somebody's got to have a phone. 30, 36, 36 million. 36 million. 36 million. 30 that is 12 million. 30 that's 12 million and whatever the portion mm -hmm. of the city is. I think it's a great deal. I, I'm very happy. It's taken uh, two years to come up with an agreement on this, so constantly talking to them. And they've been nothing but great. They, they, everyone over there, I, um, these will actually become friends. It's been, like I said, three years or two years of constant talking. And uh, they're great people to work with. That's awesome. So, so that's good news. So, I mean, do you, I mean, best case, Worst case scenario, we break even next year. We don't go down. Yeah, I, I'm not going to say that because I don't know if they're going to be occupied next year. Okay, but you were saying that. But there are other next year. there are other right. uh, buildings that you know the ones that are along Sheridan Road that are going to bring us in the same amount per square footage, a you know, dollar or 180 dollars a square foot. Uh, so there are some positives, and we are going through a quad next year, which means that every single house is going to be revalued which means the houses that have been at the board of review and got big reductions are going to be brought up to everybody else that hasn't got a reduction. So, you know, we may uh, see an increase in assessed valuation just because of the quadrennial. Yeah. We may, and we could, but and I, best case scenario, I mean, you can't even say if we could stay the same next year. I, I can't. Okay. You know, until, okay. I, until I push the button and revalue the township, I, I really don't know. Mm -hmm. So, so would you agree that it's a safe, safe bet to just kind of think that that's probably a good bet that we would stay the same? Not go down, not go up? Yes, I would say that. Okay. So, I mean, just to use a, to be able to do some projections for the right. future. <coughs> so, in the top evaluation, if we stay exactly the same for next year and we get the 567000 which that's, like I said, best case scenario, um, at the end of 2017, we'd be we'd be in the red, about $78,000. Um, but the good news is, Larry said he'd take a sabbatical for the year, and so we're really keeping <laughs> You take the first six months, I'll take the second six months. Oh, okay, months. <laughs> What do you think about that? <laughs> yeah, okay. you can, yeah, I'll take the first part when it's all the year. Thanks a lot, <laughs> um, 
So what Gail and I were working on was just if we had lowered our um, our expenses down um, from seven hundred and forty seven thousand to seven hundred thousand, that will that will get us through two thousand through two thousand seventeen and have you know a little bit not a lot sixteen thousand dollars, but it will at least get us through hopefully um, this really hard part. So um, Larry and I already had some conversations about you know some of the places that we need to be um, hard on this year and. and We'll continue those conversations for the budget in, in the spring and just see where we can skim off another $50,000 for thinking. And so we'll go from there. So just so you know the good news. Um, so all of that said, um, we have a is there a motion? Okay, is there a motion to accept the truth in taxation law resolution? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? But th this is not just for general public. This is we're not adopting the levy. That'll be done. We're setting the process in place. We'll have a hearing at the next board meeting, and then we'll adapt it at the next board. This is just so that we can publish it and have it out there so that everybody can know what we're doing. So, and just I mean, just overall information. Um, last year we uh, levied one million seventeen thousand five hundred and fifty-six. $197. This year we're setting the levy at $889,325.71. So, like I said, we're down 12.6% from what we um, levied for last year. So, um, okay. No other discussion? Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Flamini? Aye. Trustee Mateen? Aye. Trustee Hill? Aye. Trustee Taylor? Aye. Chairman? Aye. Assessor's report, the last of it. I think I already said what I did. Sorry, That's okay. Wow, that's fine. Did, did you have anything else? Nope, that was it. I was just going to talk about the P-Town, and that's about it. Thanks. Did you have anything else? Okay, and then Sue, we're back to report. Um, Sue, we're Okay, and then Supervisor's report announcements. Um, every month I've been giving you all a um, report on the different services that we provided at the township. <coughs> uh, Gail actually found a glitch in the tabulating and um, some of the numbers were incorrect. So she is um, having the team go through each month's report and fix them and get the correct numbers so that by the end of the year, um, by the, uh, the end of December, we want to have the, the exact numbers of the, of the people that we serve, whether it was emergency assistance, general assistance, uh, the money that was spent, uh, the um, money that were, or the resources that were obtained through other agencies and what that dollar amount was so that people can recognize the value of the different agencies that are working. So um, I will have that report next month. Uh, second thing I wanted to share with you is that we're looking um, at changing banks from PNC to First Merit. Met with David a couple of times talking about it. Um, after careful consideration, uh, working with our accountant, uh, what he pointed out was that um, uh, Illinois Metro Fund shows that we would face a loss of interest income by about $2,000 if we make that change, which outweighs the benefits of easier access to cash checks and monthly collateralization statements, which were our two biggest issues. Um, after talking to Nathan um, about the, the concept of switching banks, we've decided that it's probably in the best interest of uh, um, the township residents that we stay at PNC for now until um, uh, that might change. So there were some technicalities. I don't know if you've talked to them at all, David. Uh, but uh, um, yeah, it sent up a red flag. And it, it was interesting because it's something that First Midwest or First uh, Merit wouldn't know. So, and when Nathan brought it up, he was like, you know what, I did figure something out. And they went through the calculations of what the interest income is. So, um, but I just wanted to kind of be on the same page with you guys that um, we have banked at, at PNC for quite a while um, and that with the, with the evaluation that we did that we're going to um, stay at PNC for, for this year as we move forward. So, um, ELF, The ELF Network has launched. Uh, Zion Township is working with Zion Elementary District, Beach Park uh, School District, and Zion Benton Township High School to serve all of the families that live in Zion. Uh, the school social workers have been asked to identify 65 families that will be adopted through Santa for the Very Poor, uh, and uh, as well as Kiwanis, Bernie's Books, and other donors. Um, so the school social workers are actually getting us that information, so they're faxing over the information as we speak. So we'll be going down to Chicago on December 13th to do the, um, uh, the 
where we sort out all the toys and everything and bring uh, uh, pack them up in the truck and bring them to the township and then uh, the, the Tuesday um, the is it if that's the 13th 14th the 16th uh, Santa for the very poor which is Rick DeLil and Dave Delash and uh, Christian Erzinger they sponsor our community um, they will be bringing up on Tuesday uh, huge bags of food and gift cards from Jewel. Are they doing, are they doing as much as they did? No, it years. was um, last year they did 80 families. In the past, they've always done 80 families. This year, um, because um, the uh, it's not Dave Belash, it's um, Dave uh, K N O P P Dave Pack. Um, I misspoke about that. And uh, but uh, Dave has a business in Mundelein, so they wanted to do a few families in Mundelein too. So. <coughs> and I offered to contact their Mundelein Township Supervisor and you know to show them our process because it's really significant what we do when working with we work with Love Inc and they do a clothing closet um, Love Inc has a photographer that does a family portrait for the family and then Christian um, uh, Christ Community Church does a dinner for all the families so it's really significant what's put on for for everybody with the Elf Network so um, but so Saturday December 13th at 5 30 a.m. I had to Chicago and anybody wants to come with and help pack up toys so I'll be more than happy to bring you with. Um, so uh, the next item is just, I passed out the brochures, but I just want to keep it on here. Um, brochures to help residents and partner agencies better understand what all Zion Township does are available in our office. Um, really proud of them, and a lot of the other townships are actually modeling their brochures based on uh, the one that we put together, so I'm really proud of that. Uh, consumer Credit Counseling Services is always available in our office on Thursdays. Uh, it is free to the community. You just call uh, their number and uh, make an appointment. And he's even come out on Fridays when he hasn't been able to put people in. So he's been, uh, they've been really good. Um, last Saturday, we had our third Design Button Leadership Academy graduation. Um, and just another really, really effective program. I was very proud. So this makes 30, well, 35, because uh, one of the participants uh, dropped out because she had to. Um, work on Saturdays and didn't think it was appropriate to try and stay in and not be able to make the classes. So we had 11 graduate this year. Um, just really top-notch people. I'm excited for um, for our community having this program here. So. I, I guess Sherry, I would ask uh, if there's any way <coughs> that we can ensure that the people that are graduating from that are kept involved in our community. I happened to be there with somebody who lives outside of Zion, and they were extremely impressed and actually commented on uh, how articulate and absolutely fantastic the people were that spoke and participated in the program. And I, I'm just hoping that something's set up so that they continue to be involved and we don't waste that talent that's here. Mm -hmm. Well, there's some specific things that we're working on. One is an alumni association. Uh, doing ongoing trainings for the people that have graduated, so all 36, and the mentors have the opportunity for the trainings that we do. Uh, and encouraging specifically people to get involved. I mean, our goal is that every person that goes through CBLA either joins a board, um, volunteers with an organization, joins a civic group, or runs for office. So, And I had one of the graduates in my office this morning just making sure she filled out everything right to run for library board. So, um, yeah, it's I'm really excited that we've just got some... Uh, just some new blood that's excited to be a part of the community. They don't have an agenda. They're not, you know, they just really want to help the community. I think it's undiscovered talent. They're really, really sharp. Yeah. yeah, every year. I mean, this is our third year, and we keep thinking that, you know, oh, geez, you know, we're going to have to stop for a couple of years. But the people that are showing up, we have a lot of amazing people in this town that yeah. that we don't even work in. So thanks. I appreciate that. Um, so Zion Township is partnering with Zion Elementary District with the youth leadership team. And I didn't put this on here, but I actually um, was in touch with the high school, and um, the high school is going to is uh, uh, identified four kids from their leadership team that's going to join the kids. So we're going to have kids from fifth grade all the way through senior to be a part of this leadership team, and they will be uh, uh, helping us to implement community character. So um, I'm really excited about that. Um, and talk about community character, the words have been chosen and defined, and we will have more information as we. Uh, determine how to launch that for the community. Uh, next thing to let you know, um, the building across the street from Zion Township, which has been vacant forever, uh, I found out who is moving in there. Um, for those of you that don't know, it's the Lake County Health Department Behavior Services Williams Consent Decree Program. 
uh, and uh, it enables qualified individuals with mental illness um, professional support to live independently. So it's a it's a drop-in center where they help them to stay on their meds and, and provide services for individuals. So um, waiting for a callback to see how we can collaborate and support them uh, in making sure that residents that really um, need access to that program can, can get that access. So. Um, next item, I had Township Officials of Illinois Conference uh, last weekend. Uh, and just to point out, I just wanted to share the top three takeaways that I had from the conference was the first one was that communication is crucial. Um, working with other taxing bodies and other townships in the uh, township to better, in the county, to better communicate to residents the services that are provided. Um, that's one thing that we're really good at in, in design with the Harbor and Beach Park, but we've got a lot of work to do. And, um, there's been some talk, and Mona, you'll hear about it later, um, from uh, some conversations that have been going on uh, to uh, better coordinate communication and really do a plan to help residents uh, connect with that information. Uh, a disaster plan, um, that, that was one of the classes that talked about, and I've, I've talked to Frank about it, I've talked to Al about it a number of times, um, and putting together a disaster plan. Uh, there is a trustee, uh, Ronald Shemansky, no relation to Chris Shemansky, uh, that is, um, he is spearheading those plans and working across um, Cook County to find the best practices. And so the best I could get out of him was they're gonna be having a field trip to see the best communities that have disaster plans. Uh, and not just, you know, our fire department has, has a great disaster plan, our police department, but a collaborative working plan. Um, and so he designated two seats on the bus for me, um, so long as I don't tell any of the other township supervisors in the county, um, so that we can go and spy in and uh, get some, you know, I call it case the joint, copy and steal, whatever we can, so. Um, and then the last thing was uh, the importance of an IT policy, and Gail was not there. I, I got the courage for the guy that provided that class, and she's going to be working with them to make sure that that policy is up to date. Um, a few other things uh, going on. Coalition for the Communities, Community Spelling Bee was a huge success. The Queen Bees of Zion, Red Hatters, uh, took the, the, we got the cheer section again. Um, I think that's three years in a row that we won that. Uh, and Kingdon's Funeral Home beat out the library, beat out the high school. Uh, to uh, win the traveling trophy this year. So it was fun. There were 20 teams, I think, 20 uh, adult groups of three that were in this competition. And it, every year, it's just an amazing uh, program, and it's to raise money for the Coalition for Healthy Communities. Uh, there will be a mobile food pantry at Abiding Love uh, Food Pantry, which is also at Christian Assembly of God, 2929 Bethel, uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, November 19th, from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. Uh, and so if anybody knows anybody, it's not a sign up, it's just a show up. So if you know of anybody that could use that, we've been putting out that information in, uh, through the township, but just to share that. And then Thursday, CAP is having its fifth anniversary dinner, and I just think that's really significant. Um, 50 years with the services that they've been providing in our, in our county. And then last night, I was at um, Safe Place had their 35th anniversary and annual meeting at the, at the College of Lake County. Um, and in the notes, which you'll find on the website, um, I provide their, their website address for uh, anybody that wants more information on that. So a lot of anniversary things going on. Um, but and then last but not least, uh, for the Christmas holidays, uh, we've decided to close the office on Monday, December 15th from 11 until 1.30 um, uh, to do just a little Christmas Thing. We're not going to do a party or anything, we're just going to go to lunch. Um, budget cuts, we're going to keep it as tight as possible and just um, um, have a lunch with the, with the staff. So um, that's, our, that's our plan. So, um, is there anything else to come before the board? Is there a motion to adjourn? Move. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? Yes. But please call the roll. Trustee for the meeting? Aye. Trustee for the team? Aye. Trustee Hill. Aye. Trustee Taylor. Aye. Chairman. Meeting adjourned. Bye, Larry. <laughs>